Hey everybody, following up on my Octopi series for the Anycubic Viper, I wanted to walk through some of the plugins that I've been playing around with and having some success with that I like, uh, some of the things that I have run into that I found when I was using these, uh, some recommendations that I have, but also I want to answer a question that a user asked me regarding the setup that I chose and some of the other things. That The question is, is the Pi 4 overkill for one printer webcam setup? It seems like a cheaper model could do the trick. Is it possible to connect your smartphone, like if I wanted to check up on a print when I'm out and about? Thanks again. I'll get back to that question in a minute or sort of answer it while I run through some of these. If you want to look and see what you have for OctoPrint plugins, or if you want to install some others, you go to Wrench or the Spanner, depending on where you're at. I know we have some fans in the UK. And you can see down here all of the plugins you have. I like Exclude Region. This is a sneaky one. So I guess we'll start right at the top. Exclude Region is excellent. What does it do? I'll show you really quickly. So a lot of the plugins will add something here. You can see Optolapse also has this large button here, and you can see I, I added pretty G code. So at first, when you install Exclude Regions, you might be looking for it in here. But where it really ends up is here in this G code viewer. What you'd see here if something was printing is, of course, uh, a view of the print in progress. Now if you have a few pieces that are printing and one of them starts to turn to spaghetti, you can right here add a rectangle, add a circle, modify the region. See these these few little buttons right here? These are tremendously helpful. If you have, let's say, you know, one part in this area, one part in this area, this one's going off the rails, but this one's going along fine. You can come over here, add a rectangle and, or a circle or whatever sort of dimension you need to essentially mask or tell the printer, stop printing this area, continue printing over here. It's fantastic. Really helpful. Kudos to the developer. Uh, work, it's worked great for me. So very helpful to not have to bail out on your entire print if you have multiple pieces that are... That are um, and one of them's going wrong, one of them isn't. Okay, let's go back to our spanner here. Uh, so that's exclude region. Firmware check, I think is pretty obvious. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, that might be default. I don't remember having to install that myself. Octolabs, I might just skip this one, but now and, and circle back to it, because I have some things that I want to talk about, about Octolabs specifically. But what it is, is a plugin for creating time-lapse videos of your print. I think I think people know what a time-lapse video of your print is. Uh, it'll show your model being built in a time-lapse video, which is cool, but it has some caveats. We'll circle back to that. Printer dialogs, uh, printer notifications. I think these are all come with this because I didn't install these specifically. Touch UI is an excellent plugin. This lets you turn the web portal into a mobile friendly view. Uh, you'll see that it'll be evident here in this little mobile icon. If I do that you can activate Touch UI and it's gonna look kinda crappy on a browser but in a tablet or phone this is much more touch friendly this interface and you can toggle back and forth of course now I just turned my browser into this but you can go back and just go back to touch UI settings turn it off and you're back to the regular uh, when you're if you have this plugin installed like I do this would be your view if the browser presents itself as a desktop browser I'm on a desktop there is an indicator typically in in a browser session that will say hey I am, you know, accessing this site as browser blah, Chrome, whatever you happen to be using, I don't know, Safari or something. And we'll also tell you if it's the mobile version or not. Sometimes it, it 
uh, will tell you what your operating system version is. So anyway, that all happens on most websites in general. The, the Touch UI plugin is listening for that information if I were to visit my same URL or, or visit my Octoprint from my phone. Even though my web view looks like this, my phone would be presented with this mobile view because my phone is presenting itself as a mobile app, so it gets the mobile view. Much like if you go to many other web pages, you might notice they will look different. They're actually the same place, different uh, presentation of the information depending on what device you're accessing. So that's a that's a pretty slick uh, pretty slick app because it lets you just leave that running. If I use my phone, I get the sort of touch friendly UI, and if I use my computer, I get the more detailed UI. So very full we'll plug-in again. Let's circle back to Op Octolabs. Octolabs is excellent, but it has some caveats. What it does is it uses your camera and adds some code to your print to move the print head out of the way, take a snapshot, and put the print head back. That's going to potentially add some time, potentially create some unpredictability in your print. So would you use it all the time? Certainly not. Uh, you would use it if you're doing something where you really are intentionally creating that time lapse. That's that's when you would use it. It does take some configuration, some fine tuning to get that right, or else you may some snapshots that have the print head in it when you don't really want it, things like that. So you can you can also take some snapshots. Uh, you can control where the print head goes when you take a snapshot, how far away it moves, how long it pauses, these kinds of things. Especially if, for example, by the movement of everything, you might get some vibration or something. You can add some pause, some delay, so that the print head will move out of the way, the nozzle will move away from your print, give it a few seconds for everything to settle down, snap your pick, and then move everything back and continue the print. It, th and that can happen continuously throughout your print, and you have a lot of fine control over when you sort of set all that up. It takes a pretty decent amount of configuration. There are, if you're using Cura, uh, or depending on what slicer you use, I guess, it, it has their instructions will tell you sort of where to go and what to add and how to add it depending on your slicer so that you get that g-code built into your flow of your print so that's what octolabs is it does take some does take some setting up and like i said definitely not a thing you would use for every single print it's specifically to make a cool time lapse video of a particular print once you get it set up and and working well it would probably be be fun to have handy and set up and tuned. It just takes takes some time to get that done, and then you might say, "Oh, well, this would be a cool print to take some pics." I don't I don't mind as much if it's going to be impacted time wise. It'll just be fun to have a time lapse video of this. Okay, for now for now I've just disabled it because I don't have it set up well. Uh, I haven't taken the time to to fine tune this and things so. Uh, I haven't needed needed to use it yet. Those so those are the those are the plugins that I have installed and I've I've had some degree of success with that that I'm enjoying. Now, this user also had asked me, is the Pi 4 too much for this purpose? And I'll I'll sort of tell you my rationale here. If you if you jump over to the OctoPi site themselves, they say Clearly, recommended hardware is a Pi 3B, 3B+, plus, or 4. Expect print artifacts and long loading times with other options, especially when adding a webcam or installing third-party plugins. So I read this, of course, before I purchased my Pi. When I was buying the Pi, I wasn't even sure I was going to like this setup. I'm really not all that bothered by having to slice my file to an SD card and just bring it to the basement. Uh, that's not a massive inconvenience for me. I don't, but I just, uh, in the in, in the spirit of, 
learning and experimenting and things, I thought it would be fun to set this up. So, I based my decision on this. Uh, some of the information here they're saying if you're using third party plugins, that's going to affect the horsepower that you're going to need to drive the Octopi. If you're writing a webcam, if you're using something like Octolabs that's creating snapshots and things and storing them and, and assembling them and all of that, you're going to need some storage. You're going to want extra processing for some of these plugins. And depending on how crazy you're going to go with plugins, how many of them you're going to try to run all at once, you're going to need more power. So I also was thinking, aside from using this as a ProPi server, I just decided if I'm going to purchase a Pi, if I ever want to use it for another purpose, I might as well at the time just purchase the best Pi I can get my hands on. That way I'll get the maximum usefulness out of this Pi. So if a year from now or two years from now I still want to do something, it should still have enough of processing power and RAM and things to do something else with it. It's really two factor for me why I went with a Pi 4. It's definitely overkill. You could go with a cheaper Pi. Uh, if you had one kicking around, I'm sure it would be fine for the purpose, really. And, and even with a couple of plugins, I, I'm betting it would be fine. I don't, I don't get the sense that this is particularly stressed out in any way. It's just that I wanted, while I was buying and assembling one, I just said, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get as much time out of this device as I can if I want to do something else with it. So that was my rationale for for going with a Pi 4. A couple of other interesting plugins that I'm looking at is Print Scheduler. This looks pretty cool. I may install this. I'm going to circle back to the user's other question uh, while I'm looking at some of this. It, is it possible to connect it to your smartphone if I wanted to check it while I'm out and about? So that's it's a very interesting question. Someone asked me that exact question on the Anycubic Photon Mono X because it has Wi-Fi connectivity. And I, I uh, responded to that person with a, a long series of what it actually would take to facilitate getting a remote access to your Anycubic Photon Mono X. I'm sure you can dig around my 3D print playlist and find that if you're interested in. It's really more of a... Uh, networking deep dive than it really is about printer specifically but you sort of have to understand what's happening in order to realize why that is not so straightforward so once again the answer really is it is not so straightforward there are a few plugins you can you can use to get some updates octo slack for example if you have slack or some of these other services that you can use you can install this plugin and it can push updates to you. There's also Matrix Notifier if you have if you have that service. You can get it looks like this. This would be pretty slick to get. Then you can get a picture and a timestamp and some information. Some of these, I believe Octo Slack, you can even send ends back to it by, by Slack, which is pretty cool. You know, basic cancel, pause, print, resume, things like that. But again, they rely on these other services. Also, Matrix. This is a plugin called AstroPrint Cloud. Again, it relies on AstroPrint Cloud service, and then you can access using the AstroPrint mobile app. You can monitor your 3D printer. So what do these, these all have in common? I think it's pretty clear. They all rely on a third party cloud service. Why? Because you don't want network traffic coming to your printer from the outside world. That's the whole work security 101 reason why you wouldn't want that. You don't want outside traffic being able to see your internal home traffic. There's a device, whether you know it or not, some type of firewall network appliance that's letting your traffic out, letting whatever you're reaching out to respond back to you. TCP, IP, UDP, those communications are happening. What you don't want is someone to just be, you know, sitting outside your house or sitting across the, the planet being able to come into your network. That's what you would have to do because then they may be able to discover traffic of your other devices in your home once you start looking at the traffic 
the communications that are happening in your house, you can potentially start picking those things apart if they are or are not encrypted. Uh, if they're not encrypted, then the information will just be sitting right there in plain text and you can read it. If it is, it's a little more difficult, but you can start sort of escalating and, and advancing your attack. Okay, we're going into, you know, cybersecurity territory and that's not the purpose of this channel, but these all rely on an already established, secure, based internet presence. You connect to it. It facilitates the com conversation for you. Much like uh, if you look back at my AnyCubic Photon Mono X and drawing and things that I did to, to sort of a, do a deep dive and explain all this, likewise, it's it's an extremely similar concept. So you need you need something that's handling all of this outside cloud-based internet communication and you connect to it securely. Last but not least though, uh, there's also Octo Everywhere, which is the one that seems most intriguing to me. This is interesting because they host they host this specifically for Pi, and you connect to it over TLS, which is encrypted, transport layer security, and that. Uh, I also like this. Uh, if they support two-factor authentication, that's a real winner for me. Uh, I, I still have some questions. I'm going to do some sort of security digging into what they have going on, so just because when you're connecting to somebody else, that means they can connect to you. So you want to make sure uh, what's you know what the security mechanisms are that are that are protecting some of those things. But if your account at least is protected with two-factor authentication, that's fantastic. Why? This is, again, going down a strange territory this, in Cybersecurity 101, but it's something you know and something you have. What you know is your password, right? Fluffy Bunny 27 and what you have is another factor, something, your phone, a token, other, a physical piece of hardware or even a random number generator that's always changing every 30 seconds or every minute or something. So somebody could get your username, somebody could guess your password. It would be really difficult to do all three of those things. They could probably get your user, guess your password, but it would be really difficult to guess the ever-changing number or break the algorithm that is generating some random number string in these other factors that you could set up. So that's a really strong way to secure your account. Folks here at Octo Everywhere have some connections back to your printer in some way uh, and that's that's the piece I'd like to dig into a little bit but if it is done in a secure way I think this seems like the most straightforward solution all you do is plop this plug in on and make it sound that easy anyway I haven't tried it myself and use some apps what those apps do is those apps reach out to the Octo Everywhere servers the Octo Everywhere servers can talk to your OctoPi server and facilitate that conversation. Just like, uh, just like you know, Octo Slack would be doing. Slack would be facilitating this conversation. In this scenario, Octo Everywhere would be doing it, or Astro Print. So there has to be some presence outside of your house to facilitate that conversation back uh, to your printer. Do you want that? I'm not. I'm not so sure. I'm ready to jump to recommending that. So it would be if what you want is full blown control over your entire Octopi. You're going to need something like Octo Everywhere. Uh, if you just want notifications, potentially be able to respond with some commands. I think Octo Slack might work, but of course it works for more than just Slack. It works for some of these other things. Again, you still need to have one of those services, and a lot of them, uh, or at least a few of them, are um, not free. I think those are the main things I wanted to, to cover in this video, and, and I wanted to get back to this user as far as some of the information that they were asking about, and I wanted to close the loop on Octo. I have been, been using it, been having some fun with it. I'm not printing anything at the moment, uh, so I can't show you anything that's printing with it, but uh, been enjoying it. If you find this information helpful, have a great day.